Hey fellow dividend investors. So the stock markets continue to hit all time highs. My portfolio is doing the same. The stock prices keep going up, but at the same time, my portfolio yield is therefore declining because simply said, the dividend growth doesn't keep up with the, with the price appreciation at the moment in my, in my portfolio. That's why I started to analyze a little bit, like what can I do more to add some dividend yield and, and dividend yield on cost to my portfolio. And I thought like, well, hey, I'm probably not the only one here. So today I will share with you three high dividend yield stocks that are currently spotting more than a 7% yield on cost. So stay tuned and see you on the inside. So as always, what I do when I analyze a stock, I look at six main criteria. The first one being, does the company have a catalyst or a mode? What it means for me, like, is it protected against competitors? And at the same time, is it, does it have some growth prospects that will allow us to continue growing this company for, let's say, the five, next five years to the next 10 years? So I'm looking at trends or, or just industry uh, dynamics. These are really important for me first before I even look before I even start to look at the financial information re related to the company. But then I want to see earnings growth generally over time. Yes, it can have some hiccups over the years, but generally I need to see earnings growth because it's confirmation that the business is growing for me, unless of course it's doing divestions and such to, to reduce low margin businesses, but overall earnings growth. I want to see strong key free cash flow because free cash flow is really what is going to pay the dividends for us. So free cash flow is also much less easier to manipulate. So that's why it's so important for me. The fourth one is a healthy balance sheet, a, hel a really leveraged balance sheet like the one from Upfi or something like that might constrain a company to to take advantage of opportunities coming on, uh, coming around in their industry. So it will be harder than to jump on an acquisition or to make main capital investments if you need to pay down debt. The fifth one is dividend safety here. I look at the payout ratios as an example, but also sneakily look a little bit at the dividend history. And last but not least, I want to look at the valuation of a company because I don't like to overpay for dividend stocks. So knowing this, that these are my six main criteria, I will now show you the three stocks, the three di high yield dividend stocks with a yield of more than 7%. And while I will not call out every individual of these six items, but you will see in the way the slides are compiled that um, they, they, they touch on these step by step a bit. Okay, so let's get started then. The first company is British American Tobacco, currently spotting a 7.9% yield. You can find it by the ticker uh, in, in, in England, so uh, Lon Butts for uh, Google, or BTI if you want to look at the American ADR. Um, it's a tobacco stock, stock disclaimer i owned it i had to sell it my wife didn't agree with it, it, it life is as it is but um, oh boy i would love to have this company in my uh, portfolio one of the things that i really like from this company is like it's it's really transitioning away from the transitional combustible um, brands that they have and i think uh, for the smokers under us but even uh, if you're from the 90s or the 80s uh, and you saw your parents smoking then probably camel palm Oil, lucky strike and dunhill should really be some some brands you're familiar with but nowadays if you look at the new categories that they they have been launching already for some years it's five fuse glow philo and these are doing really, really well and they really start to pick up. So you can see here already from the revenue numbers that for instance, Glow also again up 38%. So the total new category revenue here is uh, up by 50% uh, since the last uh, since the last year. So these products are doing really well now. Uh, there was some trouble with the FDA as well uh, regarding approvals and patent infringement uh, regarding, if, I believe it was uh, Altria. And uh, if I remember correctly, British American Tobacco qu came quite well out of that so far, but I don't think it's totally settled yet. Having said that, uh, their re recent results look quite strong. You see it here, they've adjusted the lead uh, earnings per share of 6.1%. Why is it adjusted? Because they had an 8% currency impact last year. And, you know, I don't really like it because currency goes up and down, but uh, I understand why they want to present clean numbers to it to us. But otherwise, there was a slight decline in the earnings per share um, if, you, if you include the currency headwinds there. 
So if we then look at financial performance, what we can see here is that the operating margin has been uh, nicely growing over the last year. You could see here that it was 33, 35, uh, 31 and half percent. And now it's more around the 36 to 39 percent. And these are good numbers, in my opinion. Net income has also grown. What is important here that is that they did a major acquisition with American Reynolds. So the that also bumped their net income um, over the years and uh, the earnings per share is currently around 2.70. If we then look at the free cash flow, you can see here as well, it has been uh, before the acquisition was around four to, to five billion, let's say, and now it's uh, hoovering around eight uh, to 10 billion um, uh, per year. These are strong free cash flows and we'll later see what this means from a payout ratio. But uh, I would say the, if you also look at their yearly capex, it's really a cash generating machine and they're mainly focused, I would say, more on the marketing than at the moment uh, uh, the capital expenditures. Um, if you look at it from a balance sheet point of view, their um, I said debt to equity looks good. It's around 60%. Um, nothing to worry about. They have a good balance sheet and they've also been paying off a, li a little bit after the acquisition of American Reynolds. So I like a lot what I'm seeing here from this point of view. If we then look at the dividend history, they've been growing their uh, dividends for 21 years now and, and it continues to grow. Their dividend payout ratio based on EPS currently stands at 80% and their free cash flow payout ratio currently at 63%. These are just really healthy numbers. Uh, such a company, a slow growth company, has quite predictable earnings. So here it's no surprise that they also pay more than 60% and it's no worry for me at all. And they have a five-year dividend growth rate of 6.5%. In my opinion, the dividend is really safe and they have been really knocking it out of the park also with the dividend growth rate. It's, it's in my opinion, if you have nothing against SIN stocks, um, I think this, this company probably deser deserves to be having a nice position in many people's uh, portfolio. If you look then from a valuation point of view, so let's see if it's now today attractive to buy as well. I believe that the company is currently 24% um, undervalued based on my calculation of a fair value of 35 pounds. Currently it trades around 27 pounds. So um, what is important here, I use um, growth numbers of, uh, let's say my baseline case of 6% and, and in the first next four or five years, then 3% growth. And I'm demanding for a high yield dividend company, a 10% uh, discount rate. At the terminal multiple of 12, it comes to a baseline case of 35.40 uh, pounds um, here. What is good to know, I took a free cash flow of 8 billion. You just saw in the figures before that you could also take 9 billion, but I want to be a bit uh, conservative in here. So in my opinion, this company is currently 24% undervalued. I know why it is. It's probably not doing so well uh, from an ESG score point of view and as, and as a SIN stock. So um, there are just many pension funds and other maybe ETFs that don't want to have a company like British American Tobacco in their index or in their portfolio. So I would say that's really great for us as investors that don't have an issue with it because it means that this company will probably trade at a discount for a very long time. And that's really good because you're in it for the dividend cash flow and you can really nicely reinvest these dividends at a high yield and still get the growth of 6.5% per year. So for me, this is a perfect company if you're in it for, for the cash generation. Don't expect too much uh, price appreciation because of this discount that um, uh, that's in there in the market. But hey, we want, comp we want uh, to buy companies, for instance, for 70 cents for the dollar. This is one of those companies, in my opinion. Okay, enough about British American Tobacco. Let's go to the second company, and that's Rio Tinto. One of my Twitter followers, uh, Miwash, is often asking me, like, have you looked at Rio? Have you looked at Rio? Well, I've done it today, so I will share with you my uh, uh, information here. Uh, you can find it by the ticker symbol Rio, uh, both on the British uh, stock and exchange and both on the uh, ADR. And it currently spots a dividend yield of 7.4%. You will see some different dividend yields. I think you might somewhere see almost 10%. That really has to do whether you take the trade 12 months and... And that has to do again with the interim dividends and the final dividends. The company is not consistent with that. That's why sometimes you might see higher yields in your um, 
in your stock portfolio metrics, I'm taking the more conservative here, one which is probably more reliable from a going forward uh, yield point of view. So um, this company, I think what's really good to know here, it's a mining company. Their biggest competitor is BHP Billiton from, the, from Australia. And what you can also see is that the most important um, commodity for them is iron ore. Second is aluminium, but you can see that iron ore keeps continue to growing. Uh, and I am not surprised with what the world demands uh, currently. I wouldn't even say that it's just the electrical vehicles here, but it's just all over the place. The, the global uh, economy keeps on expanding and this is doing really well for the iron ore needs that there are in the world. Um, what more you see it here as well that the strong demand is there. I'm taking this from the investor presentations. It saves me some time looking up all the data myself. Uh, but here you can also that see that iron ore continues to grow. And uh, what I like about this company is that they have a really uh, focus on on uh, how I said on replacing their investments or replacing their uh, asset base so that's why they're why they are so focused on capex because for instance their mining their mines will decline they will go empty so they need to replace those mines and that's why they need capex to find new fields and to build those new uh, new fields the second uh, focus is on dividend growth and the third one is on the iterative cycle of debt management so uh, debt management they do that pretty well and i can tell you you see that here they have continued you to to um, decline their net debt so the company is really using the current um, high high cycle of commodities really well to to just pay down the debt and that's what we needed because um, if we look back at 2016 2015 where tough times lots of debt and i think it's getting much much better now for this company so they are doing their shareholders really a big favor here when you think about the the dividend safety going forward as well from financial performance, what you can see here is they do sometimes also some acquisitions, of course. Um, they, they continue to grow. Um, I'm not looking at the current number of 11.5 in earnings. It's way, way too much and, 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 and not reliable going forward. Of course, iron ore played a role here, but this this really at peak at this moment. If we look also at the uh, free cash flow, you see the same figure of 17 billion. It's really a lot uh, driven by the revenues and but i think their free cash flow is more reliable around the 9 billion uh, going forward taking into account also that we are really at uh, peak commodity prices in some areas long term if you look at the the balance sheet you can see that long term debt has been declining from around 17 billion 5 years ago to 12 billion now while stockholders equity has grown from 40 billion to 47 billion right now so They've really used those profits to uh, to beef up their equity, and you can just say that they had stellar performance in the last 12 months. From a dividend point of view, I want you to know that this is not a stable dividend grower. You can see that they had a small dip in 2016, and in 2021, they are expected again to raise their dividend. I've shown only the interim dividend here, but what is also really nice is that they are paying bonus dividends, and they just released a big dividend again. I missed out on it because I don't own this company yet, but uh, if you own the shares in August, you are getting a massive dividend uh, in, in, in two weeks from now. The payout ratio looks really a little bit, uh, how is it, a bit awkward here with such high cash flow from last year, around 24%. But I think that uh, you need to take that cash flow almost in half and then the dividend payout uh, is around 50%. Dividend growth for me is 11 years, although uh, I'm, I'm ignoring a little bit the 2016 uh, dividend payment here. Um, other than that, I would say you need to look at this company as a floor. Probably the floor here is around 5% five, uh, 5 dividend yield based on this, uh, depending on how it goes in the cycle. They also aim to uh, pay out dividends, I think, between 40 and 60% of earnings. So this is not necessarily a dividend growth stock, but it's a high yield dividend stock. And I think this is important for you to know if you want to invest in a company like Rio Tinto. So how does it look then from a valuation point of view? Let's cut stay, uh, straight to the chase. I think the company is currently 70% undervalued. The current price is 
to, uh, 45 pounds and I think the fair value of the company is 65 pounds. I'm using here a 9 billion uh, free cash flow like I referred to earlier and I'm using slow growth rates as my baseline a 4% growth rate in the next five years and then 2% going forward with a discount rate of 10%. I want you to know that these are quite conservative ones in, in, in the current market circumstances and specifically also with a terminal multiple of 12. This is not a high or speculative or, or, or really high uh, I said forecast and still the fair value for me is around 65 um, uh, pounds at this moment I can tell you based on this I'm aiming to start initiating a position so thank you Miwash for bringing this to my attention I've for a long time ref um, stayed away from Rio Tinto because I owned BHP Billiton already but I think I can do with a second materials company in my portfolio so I expect probably an update maybe uh, if you follow me on social media and one of the upcoming two uh, two weeks where I will buy uh, something here. What you, what's good to know, I haven't in this video at all yet looked at the stock price. I don't care about the stock price for this one. I have no price anchor either around uh, Rio Tinto. So for me, it's already at a fair value. I'm not going to look at where it is. I didn't even do it. So I don't know if it has been declining or, or increasing. Uh, maybe I'll check it out of this after this video just for the fun. Okay, then the, the third one that I want to share with you, is, if, with you is the American Omega Healthcare Investor. It's a real estate investment trust currently yielding 7.9%. I own already a full position in this company, but I thought it's worth sharing with you. This yield is uh, high when you look at their peers. Also, when you look at real estate investment trust in itself, it's a, it's a high yielder among the industry. Um, but what I like about this company is that it's really looking at the population growth or a play on the, let's say, not the population growth, but actually on the boomers uh, retiring. So it is uh, a company that has facilities for skilled nursing and assisted living. What you, How I look at it effectively is li like if you're, uh, and, and this sounds really sad, but if you're dying and, and you can't, your, your family can't take care of you anymore, this is probably your last place that you will go to. And the company charges a lot of money for that or not this company, but the operators uh, operating those facilities. So this is what this company is really uh, about. And with that also it depends a lot on Medicare and Medicaid. So what you need to know with this company is that there is a government risk. I own these companies now, this company now for four years. This government risk had already been there since Obama, then Trump, now Biden. I don't think that it's going to change anytime really quickly soon. It's so hard. You need to know that companies own politicians, not politicians, companies in the States. So I don't see any changes really quickly. Definitely not now that uh, the Republicans and the Democrats simply disagree on everything that they have. What is also good to know is that they have some facilities in the UK as well, but they have around uh, 1,000 facilities overall. And I think this is uh, these are some of the numbers to be aware of. And based on this picture, you can also see where they have the majority of their presence. And it's really a lot in the East Coast, as you can see. Company exists since 1992. Um, and what I think is really nice here that it also shows uh, the number of bets and they continue to increase and they do this mainly via acquisition. So I believe in 2014 and 2018 they did uh, both an acquisition again to increase their portfolio size. Um, what is important with this is of course that there is an impact from COVID-19 because the, the elderly are more fragile. Um, I believe that they have done really well during these times and if you had a chance to, uh, to buy the stock when it dipped to $16, I salute you. You've got then probably a 15-16% yield at this moment in time. Um, but I want to show you here and what you see here as well that um, the contagion rate that they have been looking at is uh, sincere, uh, significantly uh, declined by 95% since the pandemic. So you can say generally that these facilities are relatively safe at the moment for the elderly to be there. And they collected more than 90-90% of their rents in the first quarter, um, April and May. So the company is doing well. It has a tough time. It had a tough time at the depth of the uh, pandemic, but currently it's just, uh, I think, back to normal, so to say. 
Um, here you see what I mentioned before. Um, it's really about Medicare and Medicaid, uh, the, the governmental support programs, let's say, in the United States uh, that are driving a lot of their revenue in the background, hence this political risk. Um, but uh, if you look at the patients per day and the, and the income here, it has been growing with 4% overall um, going forward. What you can see here also is that the Medicare, they have a length of stay of 20 to 25 days and in Medicaid up to uh, 18 months. So this shows you a little bit what their business model uh, really is about. Um, and here, what I meant with the aging population, I think this is really an aging population play. If you believe that the uh, American, um, I said, industry keeps the same, continues to be the same, and the healthcare um, uh, costs are not going to be cut by the government, then I think I personally as a shareholder will do really well still over the next uh, 10, 15 years. So let's look at it here. So we don't look at the earnings here, the earnings per share. We look at the uh, FFO per share funds from operations or even the adjusted funds from operations. And here you can see that they are currently around $2.26. What, what, what you need to know, it's a little bit less than their dividend payment at the moment. Um, so you need to take, um, how is it? Uh, a look at that but what uh, I said what Omega Healthcare really looks at themselves is the adjusted uh, funds from operations and they are uh, higher here from that point of view looks good long-term debt 5 uh, five billion stockholder equity 3.8 billion I think these are decent numbers for a real estate investment trust dividends have been growing really rapidly from 2010 to 2017 after they're mainly flatlined because of the industry dynamics and also the pressure of um, um, of, of healthcare and that's why you also see that this stock is currently trading at a 7.9% um, dividend yield. Uh, adjusted funds from operation there's a 81% payout ratio dividend growth for 17 years I've not counted uh, the flat line from last year otherwise it would be of course zero years and a five-year compound annual growth rate of 3% so it's a high yield uh, um, um, high yield but low growth dividend if you compare this to British American Tobacco you get that stock for the same yield but you get it with um, uh, a better dividend growth 6.5% we saw there and less political risk there it's really the I would say the discount from the um, uh, being a sin stock. So um, nevertheless, I like this company a lot. I've got a full position in it and I don't intend to uh, sell it anytime soon. And it has been giving me already a really good uh, total return in dividends. From a valuation point of view, I believe it's slightly overvalued, currently of 16%. If you look at it from an um, uh, adjusted uh, funds from operation per share point of view, it's currently yielding nine, uh, uh, or sorry, it is currently a multiple of nine. Uh, based on the other one, the uh, funds from operation itself, it is currently uh, uh, let's say a multiple of 15 but if we take here the growth rate of 5% also again um, for the next five years and then the five years afterwards 3% and a discount rate of 10% and multiple of 12 you can see that here the baseline case around $29 for this stock um, I, I'm not intending to buy more because I already have a full position if you're interested in the stock I would say still wait a little bit this company typically dips once in a while to the $30 and that might be a nice entry point for you to uh, consider this one um, if we get another pandemic again like we saw last year then you can pick it up at a certain moment 16 or 17 dollars uh, I mean I, I wish I, I, I did it at that time but um, well I owned already full position I didn't need to own more that's why I let it go and let it ride so these are the three stocks that I wanted to share with you British American Tobacco Rio Tonto and uh, Omega Healthcare. I think these are three solid companies to consider for uh, dividend growth investors. They give you current high yield dividend income. And like I mentioned, I'm intending to buy some Rio Tinto in the upcoming two weeks. If you got this far, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. If you like such videos and, want, and you want to see more of it, let me know in the comment uh, about which stocks you would like me to have a look at. At the same time, don't forget to do a thumbs up, uh, give me a like on the video or subscribe. It really helps me. It also helps the algorithm. So um, and it's my intention to keep continue to grow this channel. For now, enjoy your Sunday. Have a great weekend and see you next, uh, see you next show.